The next panel is awesome. It's going to be all about food video. Salma, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us how you got to be you, how you got into the video and food space? Sure. Oh, you can hear me. It works. Um, Hi, so I'm Sama. Um, I first really got started in food video in college where I worked really closely with my school's TV station. Um, I developed a food series about food in the Mission District of San Francisco and that's kind of how I got really involved with it. Um, and then fast forward about like a year, I started my food Instagram mainly as a place to like put the food that I was eating like off of my camera roll because I was like, this is getting aggressive, like I need to put it somewhere else. Um, so kind of accidentally started developing recipes when I moved here to New York. I joined the NBC Page program. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a one year uh, kind of like developmental program within NBC where you work Seth Meyers, Fallon, SNL, all kind of while giving the NBC studio a tour. Um, I had one of my assignments at the Today Show, which is somewhere where I'd always wanted to work. I watched it every day growing up with my mom. Um, and so then I got a job at the Today Show as a production assistant. I was there for two years, um, and all kind of while building Data Eats, um, still getting up at three in the morning, going to work at four um, for two years. And um, throughout the kind of back end of that, I, you know, a senior producer suggested I get booked on the show for a segment, and then that kind of went from there. So now I'm a food contributor for today, as well as the host of Hashtag Cooking with Sama Dada, which is a Today digital series. That was a lot. No, that I'm was sorry. great. That was Whoa. so good. Erin. <laughs> I was going to say, it's hard to follow that up. Um, me. So I have been in the food media industry for 11 years, which makes me sound way older than I feel or am, I feel like. Um, but yeah, I started, I was part of the launch team that launched Food Network Magazine at Hearst. I started as an intern. I worked my way up to assistant food editor. Um, I worked at Good Housekeeping in the test kitchen doing recipe development and um, started doing a lot of the food digital content for Good Housekeeping and Hearst there. And then about three years ago, I moved over to BuzzFeed, which is where I am now. Uh, and I actually took a little bit of a pivot. I decided to do, I took a job launching um, the lifestyle content of everything except food, which was such a big departure for me. Get off uh, the stage. I know, I know. Um, but you know what, it was, it was great because it was a little bit of a pivot. Um, by, by saying not food, I just wasn't working on Tasty, which is our big food brand. So I was doing food for our other brands like Playful, Nifty, and Goodfall, um, and sort of adjacent to all of the amazing Tasty producers who, um, you know, had very formulaic stuff going on. So yeah, I've been working in the food industry for a long time, and now I get to do it both for BuzzFeed for our brands, but also as myself as one of their content contributors. Great. Thank you. Valerie. Yeah. Hi, I'm Valerie. Um, so I got started... It was my last year of law school, and I just kind of wanted an outlet because I was tired of um, writing. And so I started a food blog, and that was just kind of a way for me to express myself. And a few years ago, I joined Instagram. I think that was because people were sick of me posting food photos on my regular Instagram account. So it was kind of to stop annoying my friends. But um, I actually got a lot of, I got a little bit of traction and it was from my Instagram account that a casting director for the Great American Baking Show reached out to me and she said, hey, you know, we like that you bake a lot of different types of things like, you know, pies and puff pastry. So um, she thought I would be a good fit. So I auditioned. I went on the Great American Baking Show. I won. And, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I've since, like, I guess about six months ago, I Finally left my job as an attorney because I was kind of doing double duty, double duty as well, like waking up early to make pies and take pictures and put on Instagram. Um, and now I'm working on a cookbook. Great. All right, so we're going to show you some videos that these ladies have made. Aaron, you make videos that people literally crave. They want to eat them. I can't tell you how many recipes I've seen on Tasty that I, like, run out at midnight. I was like, I can make that barbecue cauliflower. It's delicious. And then I do it, and your videos are good. Uh, recipe, I, I can't carry it out as well. So um, let's show a video uh, where I believe you made jam bars. Um, we're just going to run that. 
I will talk over this video as we talk about it. Um, so yeah, so I mentioned that I pivoted when I came over to BuzzFeed. Um, I did not join the Tasty team. I joined every single lifestyle team except for Tasty. Uh, the great thing about, about BuzzFeed, but also what I've been doing as one of their content creators, is that we are now making videos as ourselves and posting them to our own channels and sort of using the learnings and all the data and stuff that we have at BuzzFeed to amplify and to really hone in on our personal projects. Um, so this was something that I made as a BuzzFeed creator. It was posted to my page. Um, it was something that I have been making for a really long time and I had mentioned to my Instagram followers that this was um, a no recipe recipe. It was something that I make from memory typically and I decided to finally like write down what I was doing to share it with them. Um, so I think the reason why you know this video has I think two point, over 2.4 million views on my personal account, um, part of that is because you know I work with BuzzFeed and we get to sort of use all of these channels to help amplify our message, but also we can use that kind of data and insight to say like, this is something that people really love, it's easy, it's approachable, it starts the video with like a yummy shot that makes you wanna eat it. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a personal narrative, which I feel like a lot of, you know, I sort of, of the panel here, represent more of like a big media brand, I guess I would say, rather than like an amazing personal project. Um, and we're finding that sort of attaching that personal narrative to things like this really makes the video and makes the project better. So that was why this did well. Oh, and there's my daughter, that's Charlotte. <laughs> she did not get to have the jam bars, but uh, she did have her first taste of cookie the other day and her little mind is blown, so oh. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Has she been in any of your videos yet? Yes, she has, uh, and we do lots of like baby food cooking videos, and she is so good at the like yummy mommy face at the end. I'm such a proud stage mom. Yeah, <laughs> she, does a, she really gives me good like good final. Oh, that was delicious shot, and her little eyes. Go so like, for good video, throw yeah. a baby or a puppy in. You know, it doesn't hurt. It really doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, okay, Valerie, we're gonna watch your clip next. As you mentioned, you were on the Great American Baking Show, and we're gonna have you talk a little bit about that experience and what you learned from it. Um, can we roll that clip? This year on the Great American Baking Show, 10 talented amateur bakers competed, and one of them, Valerie, you are star baker, yes. impressed the judges week after week with cakes. I think it looks quite elegant, actually. We've got a swirl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Donuts. That is one of the best donuts I've ever had. Stop. No, I'm not kidding you. Oh my gosh. And even pommiers. The onion that comes right in through, the garlic, and the taste and the texture are fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Well done. All leading up to a polished. Great flake. Really nice. Delicious. Last time I had cheesecake, I had 13 slices of cheesecake. I think you've done a good job on them. These are the ones with the lemon. Yes. And shout-worthy. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Tower of Treats. I am thrilled to announce that the winner of the Great American Baking Show is Valerie. Yeah! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> it's such an honor. I feel incredible. I don't even know what to say. It just feels amazing. And I'm not one that's often at a loss of words, but. <laughs> Valerie, congratulations, that's so great. Thank so, you. Can you tell us like, what you learned from that experience in terms of making food videos that you now apply to your blog? Yeah, um, I think one thing that I learned is to not be afraid of cameras. Um, I think often a lot of us you know, we get kind of intimidated if we're content creators and we're so used to being behind the camera, kind of flipping the camera and, you know, something as simple as like talking in an Instagram story. Um, so I think, yeah, just don't be afraid of cameras and people really, what they want to see is they want to see you express yourself. They want to see your personality. They definitely want to see you screw up. Like that just makes you real and human. And um, yeah, being on a television show when you when you are making a mistake and the producers like they radio every cameraman to come and get it from every angle. Um, and you think that you know this is oh my god everyone is gonna see this. Uh, yeah, you just kind of have to 
chill out. It's cool. That's how you know you're doing something wrong, right? If all the producers swarm, you're like, I thought I was doing that right, but uh, apparently not. You know, that's a very good point. Like with the technical challenges, you know, you, you're like, oh, just going right along dandy, thinking everything is fine. And if people are in your face, it's like, take a step back, read the recipe. <laughs> All right, so don't be afraid of the camera, which is good. Sama, you have had experience in front of the camera, as you mentioned. You worked as the host of NBC's cooking show on YouTube. So let's play a little clip from your blog. This one is just like not wanting to form into a ball. <laughs> she's not the cutest, but she's gonna taste really good. <laughs> This is Hashtag Cooking, I'm Sama Dada. You may know me on Instagram as at Dada Eats. And today we're gonna to be making my Maple Almond Crunch Energy Bites. So if you're a chronic snacker like me, you better keep watching. Before we get started, subscribe below. This recipe is hashtag vegan, hashtag gluten free. I'm gonna throw these ingredients up on my story really quick just so you can see what we're working with. Starting with some almond milk over there, almond flour, unsweetened shredded coconut, some chia seeds because of hashtag fiber, maple almond butter, raw almonds, medjool dates, and our chocolate coating over here using some chips and coconut oil. I personally love to snack at literally any time of the day. I could be sitting on the couch watching TV, breathing. I will need a snack. So these are amazing for that. They're so delicious, all good ingredients. I just want to start making it. I'm going to throw in some medjool dates. What I love about dates is that it's kind of a nice natural sweetener without adding any extra sugar and it gives a nice like caramelly taste that makes these so good. It's kind of like eating candy but you're not eating candy because of hashtag health, you know? Next we're gonna move on to our maple almond butter. Maple almond butter is kind of my secret weapon in this recipe because it adds a nice maple sweetness without any extra sugar, which is super cool. So I'm gonna just spoon this in here into our food processor. Hashtag great, Sama. That was awesome. So, so uh, talk to us a little bit about your experience with live network television versus digital video. And obviously, you're very personality centered. So I'd like to hear a little about Thank that too. You. Well, what was cool about the digital show that you just saw is that we really tried to lean into like the Instagram nature of it, which is something that is kind of unique in the sense that like, you know, kind of overdoing it with the hashtags and all that stuff, just to sort of lean into that, showing sort of Instagram stories and how that sort of works, putting that up on the screen. But it's really interesting. Broadcast versus digital is just crazy because in broadcast, you really have about four to six minutes, six on like a very good day. You kind of have to run through everything just immediately, kind of have everything in your brain, know what you're gonna say. The good part is that you're kind of with somebody, so I would always you know, cook with Savannah or you know, Hoda or Kathy Lee or whatever, so I would have somebody to bounce off of. But it is really insane. I mean, I black out every single time, like <laughs> don't remember anything, but you just kind of keep going and you have to keep it moving and you know you're kind of under pressure. You've got seven cameras, like. 20 crew guys just like looking at you. So it's definitely a different vibe for sure. Digital on the other hand, it's kind of like you have in the back of your mind that you have like a second shot at like doing it. And we do a lot of different pickups. So, you know, if I put that almond butter in there, I had to like pause, wait for our second camera to like put it into the food processor and then keep going. And then also if I like flub line, I'm like, wait, can I just do that again? Um, but live, you can't do that because there's millions of people watching you and you can't really mess up. Which one do you like more? You know, I love the adrenaline of broadcast because it just goes really quickly. Like I said, I black out. Um, but no, it's really, it's really an insane thing to do. And when it's over, you get to like kind of watch it back. And whenever I like am doing it, like, and I'm on TV, I, I kind of feel like I sound very like nervous or like whatever it is. But when you watch it, it looks so different than how you're feeling. So I think that's something that's a little bit different from broadcast and digital. That's great. That's great. So I think we all want to know, like, what is your video setup? Erin, I'm going to start with you because you provided us with what your home setup is and what your office setup is. So can we just roll that clip? And Erin, you can talk over it if you'd like. Yes. Okay. So, oh, look, my house and also my second house. Uh, yeah. So I think I definitely come at food video. I could do it from both ends of the spectrum, right? So you'll see on the one side in the studio image, that's our studio at BuzzFeed. And we have every sort of 
accoutrement that we could possibly want. We have the cameras, we have the sets, we have the speed rails and the lights, uh, the props. Um, but then that is my home setup on the opposite side, and that was actually the setup that I used for the video that you guys just saw, which did um, really well. It was one of our like viral hits from our creators program. So I think why I wanted to show this is that I don't think for anyone who's interested in making food video that it is, you know, impossible to do unless you have the money and the setup and the lights. Um, what you see there is just my personal camera, a tripod, and then natural light from my house, and you're able to make video that looks just as beautiful as something that we make in the studio. Uh, obviously, it's a lot easier and more professional to do it in that other space, but in terms of video performance and sort of my comfort and the pride I have in a food video when it's done, honestly doesn't feel any different when I do it in that other setup. So, so yeah, you can do it highbrow or lowbrow, guys. Great. So Valerie, can you tell us like what does your setup look like and what are like some top tools, software, and things you use for to create food video? Sure. Um, so, I mean, right now, most of my food video I use for Instagram stories um, and even Twitter just to keep things like really casual. I think it's just like a fun like hashtag BTS look into <laughs> what actually goes into like, I don't know, making a biscuit. Like people are really interested in seeing like the actual process. Um, so I, I just have a tripod and I... I use my phone for videos, actually. I use my iPhone. And um, it's kind of similar to your setup, except my window is much higher, so it's on a table. But I just have like a giant tripod and my phone. And um, if I'm doing something that takes kind of like a long time, like if I'm kneading dough by hand, I'll do a time lapse so that you can kind of see like everything very quickly and I don't have to do a lot of editing. Because my goal is really to just kind of like show that process. Um, which is kind of like right now why it, it ends up on like Twitter or Instagram stories just to show the like behind the scenes process. When you do edit, what software do you use? Yeah, I use iMovie actually. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, what do you, do you edit as well? Yeah, oh yes. Um, so I, because I am doing it for, uh, for the digital for BuzzFeed, we do use like Premiere and like the official programs that we use for all of our video editing for digital shorts. However, I will say that when I am doing stuff really quickly on my phone, I'm a huge fan of InShot as the app. Um, it's really great. I think it mimics uh, a lot of the programs. You know, I use professional programs to make my videos typically, but it really mimics it in an app. And I also use um, a Color Story as the app. Um, it's you know, a photo editor app, but it's one of the only photo editing apps that allows you to edit video as well. Uh, and they have great settings for adjusting color and all of that. So those are the two that I use a lot on my phone if I'm gonna do it on my phone entirely. Great, Sama, do you um, shoot mainly um, using a camera or your iPhone? So all of the photos and videos that I take for my actual Instagram are all with my iPhone. So I don't use a DSLR or anything for that. Um, I find it very approachable and accessible for everybody. And then something that was helpful for me when I do Instagram stories that I'm just like talking to camera, I got this little, um, like kind of like a little kickstand. Before I was like literally stacking like 12 books on top of each other, I was like, girl, you gotta like get your stuff together. Um, so I got that little stand, but when I'm shooting hashtag cooking, we have a full like setup. We've got food stylists, pretty producers, um, cinematographers, tons of cameras. How, how big is your crew? So we have about like eight people, I would say. Um, so it's like a couple producers, two food stylists, um, and then we've got two cameras. Um, but, you know, with, with that, it's obviously like we're using what, like the Today Show, like Premiere, things like that. But for my own personal stuff, I don't really mess uh, with anything. What apps do you use on your phone? So I can talk about like photo editing apps because that's kind of what I mostly do. So I like to use Snapseed, Visco, and Lightroom. Those are all like good apps to use that I feel like you can really, you know, adjust. But honestly, the key to everything is natural light. So if you can take your plate in a restaurant to a window, you, you've got it going on. I feel like restaurants these days, too, are getting really way better about lighting. I feel like five years ago, they, they weren't really, and now they're like, oh. Every table has a light in the middle for the perfect picture. It's very nice. I know. I think it takes restaurants longer to turn around tables because everyone's busy Instagramming. Um, so talk to me a little bit about Instagram stories. How do you guys use them? Are there any hacks that you can offer everyone? I mean, I think Instagram stories are really important to just connect with your audience and engage with them because, I mean, at least for me, I do mostly their photos of food on my feed. So a lot of people are like, is there a face behind? Um, so that's just a good way to like talk to people and also just you know amp up the content that you do have on your feed already. Totally. 
Totally. I use it too for in the recipe development stage of video production. So I'm one person with my own opinions. And so sometimes I like to ask like, sweet or savory? Or like, would you care more about this being like really simple and having the least amount of ingredients possible? Or do you want it to be like super impressive for your friends? So I think that it's really helpful to kind of get a sense of like what your audience is looking for because sometimes you're surprised by yeah. what they want and need. So you use Instagram stories based, basically to gauge what your audience wants. Yeah, Which exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. To, to connect with the audience and to get their preference about like what they want to see in the future. Yeah, I completely agree. I was going to kind of mention the same thing. I love polls. I love questions. Um, and that's another great way to make sure that your content is popping up on Instagram stories. So if someone engages with a poll or a question, Instagram is going to prioritize that they see the next clips that you're posting in that story. It's also a great way to, to include fails because I feel like sometimes like the f you're not going to do a whole fail video probably, but uh, it is always nice to show that like human component as well when you're like, this is burnt or it has fallen on the floor. So that's great because my next thing was that we all fail. I think it's how we learn. So do you guys want to talk about one of your biggest fails and what you've learned from it? We'll be here for an hour. I had one recently that I'd be happy to share. And I actually did make a video about it. I just said that I don't make videos about fails, but I did. Um, it, this was because I developed a cookie recipe that I shared on Instagram. Um, and I'm a new mom, so I'm very busy. And I did the baking fail. I'm sure everyone has done this at one point where like you scoop the flour, but I didn't level it. I just sort of like scooped and was like, great, one cup of flour. So when I wrote the recipe and shared the recipe, I was like, great, I used one cup of flour. I did X, Y, and Z. Um, and then I started getting messages from people being like, what the heck is up with these cookies? Like, they're totally flat. They're not turning out well. And I'm going back and I'm looking at my notes being like, that's crazy because this was, you know, really, really great. Um, so I made the recipe video. I made the recipe again exactly as I posted it and actually made a video about it um, and discovered that I had an, hey, hi, Molly. <laughs> good to see you. Um, I discovered that I, when I didn't level off the top of it, I actually had included an extra quarter cup of flour. Um, and as a result, so the recipe was, you know, changed. So I did it again with a new amount, and it worked out great. And I messaged everyone that made the cookies, and I said, I apologize. I'll Venmo you $10 to pay for your butter, uh, and everything was okay. But I did panic for, like, the 24 hours it took me to retest it, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, butter is expensive. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> it's expensive. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm self-taught. So I didn't go to culinary school. I went to law school. And so I... I mean, I think that like messing up is just a part of my creative process. So when I'm working on a recipe or developing a recipe, um, you know, I it's just like a part of the process. And there are so many um, moments where, you know, I'm screwing something up. And yeah, I, I think when it's interesting, though, because when I do post those on Instagram stories, I... I get a lot of feedback from people who have kind of had a similar thing, and it's just like a really great experience to grow. So I think that those like baking fails or flops are like one of the great ways to learn and just get interaction and engagement from your community. Yeah. Do you have a failure to share? I mean, I kind of agree with Valerie. It's all sort of trial and error. I mean, I drop stuff all the time. Like, I literally have dropped an entire, like, batch of muffins, like, inside my oven. Um, I guess that's do not really fail. That's just me being... you say hashtag dropped? Yeah, <laughs> I do. No, I don't. Um, yeah, but I'm, everything is really about trial and error, and it's going to take you a couple times to get something right. And if it is great on the first time, awesome. And if it's not, then you just got to keep working on it. And I think just being persistent and all of those failures are really important. Great. You guys kind of answered this uh, in a roundabout way. What is your one kind of takeaway for people? Like your one tip for video. Valerie, let's start with you. Be yourself and show your personality. Because, I mean, if you're making like, I don't know, brownies, which always get a lot of engagement because people love like chocolate and brownies and things that are nostalgic. But um, like anyone could post like a brownie recipe. But if you can do anything to just show your personality, I think that's gonna definitely be a plus. I say get cutaways. Always have that like punch and shot or something to cut to. So if something goes epically wrong in your editing, you always have a backup for what you can show to kind of transition you to the next part. I would say make people feel like they're in the room with you and make, I just wanna make people feel like they're cooking with me. And I think that's really important because it just fosters a sense of, you know, an audience that is close and connected to you. And that's just the most important for me. Great. Okay, guys, I think we have time for maybe two or three questions. Hi, my name is um, Vasudha, and um, 
<laughs> I guess if you're just starting out, like, would, do you guys um, suggest like really making an investment in, no. No, 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 don't invest in anything. Yeah. <laughs> invest don't. your time. In your time, yes. No, no, uh, it is so, not that it's so silly. If you decide to invest, that's great, but it's not necessary. Like, I think we've all kind of mentioned that like all of this can be done on your phone and everything can be edited on your phone and shot on your phone. I personally don't feel like it makes sense to spend money until you really see a reason to. Um, even though I, I get to play with all this fancy stuff at work, I never buy it for myself because I don't think that it's, it doesn't make a difference in terms of performance, doesn't make a difference in terms of your creativity and like your message. So until you have a really, a really solid reason to invest, I don't think it's worth it. I'm a chef and one of my goals for this year was to kind of like get into video and just like start blogging. Um, but every time I go to do it, I'm just, I live in Brooklyn, it's a tiny apartment, it's dark. like. But I have like this perfectionist like mind, I guess. And I'm like, I want the perfect lighting. I have to be up at a certain time, which I am, but like it never comes out right. I just wanted to know like what tricks or tips you guys have for that, because I just have my iPhone. My biggest tip is lose the perfection part. Just kind of uh, go for completion mm -hmm. to see like what you have to learn after that. Sama? Yeah, I was just to say you just have to start. Like there's so many people doing the same thing, right? But nobody is you, right? So I think starting and really just putting it out there. Like, who cares if it's perfect? Perfection doesn't exist. Just do it. And then, you know, you're only going to grow from there. Do you have a friend with a kitchen that's really nice? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, look, I was, like, preparing to go on the Great American Baking Show. I lived in a, like, 275 square foot studio with no air conditioner. It was summer. Like, my oven was substandard size. And I was just like in there, like me and sweat. And, you know, I was working full time, but I got up in the mornings. So even if you have a small little ugly kitchen, it doesn't even matter. As long as you have like a window, you don't need direct light. Direct light isn't even great for photos. Like if you have a window, you can put something right next to the window, especially if you're already up in the morning. You could even make it the night before and then get up in the morning. Just take like a picture with your iPhone using no flash. And you can start there and you can see, like, is this something that you want to pour time and energy into? Um, but yeah, just start really small. You don't need fanciness. All right, no fanciness, <laughs> forget perfection. And uh, that's all we have time for right now, but we're all gonna be kind of milling about here. So we are happy to answer any questions. And we're gonna do one little fun, quick video thing. Are you guys ready? Yeah. You guys, how do you feel about the wave? <laughs> you guys are like, we yeah. hate it. All right, everyone stand up. This. Ready, go. Woo! 